G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new, it has been a huge, huge week, Kim. <laughs> and uh, I'm back, I'm back from Art Drilling the Magic. It is literally Friday here and uh, kind of wrapping up a really, really long and crazy week. I'm sure you've heard what's going on. I'm not gonna uh, bore you with my thoughts and opinions about it and conspiracies, because you know I'm a big conspiracy family over here. Not really, but my grand was, and so she <laughs> left that with me. Um, but anyway, let's just get on to a bit of a journal flip today. I wanted to share with you what's been going on this past week. If you don't know, I was at Art Journaling the Magic, which is a fun little retreat that uh, happens once or, well, I should say once or twice a year here, but it actually happens a bunch of times per year um, at Disneyland in California and also in Walt Disney World. And uh, this is the journal that I used all throughout the week. It's a little golden book journal. I will link this in the description below because I do always get get a ton of uh, questions about where I get these journals from and these are lovingly gifted to me uh, at the retreat. Everyone works in these uh, throughout the week. So what you do is you uh, go to Disneyland, you're with a bunch of like-minded people on the retreat and uh, you kind of just get your crazy on art journaling the magic <laughs> of the parks throughout the entire week. We had a fantastic time. I'm um, I'm like kind of wiped at this point. Uh, so this is all I'm going to be sharing with you today. I'm not going to be doing any work in the journal um, because I think you'll see uh, this, is, this is literally I started this on Monday night. It's Friday night now. So this is how much we've packed into this week, uh, above and beyond the other things that I was doing. If you uh, saw, my Etsy had its last launch of products with the stamp collection. So uh, that's there, and I'm not going to send you over there. The link is in the description, but uh, some of them have already sold out, so I really don't want to be accountable for sending you over right now. But let's just look at this journal. Um, so I, I was going to tell you a funny story. I might tell it. I have another golden book. I had this one. Steve got me this for uh, Christmas, and he also got me a beautiful little prism. If you've never seen Pollyanna before, um, you probably wouldn't get why that's uh, really sentimental and sweet. But he sourced this book, and I said immediately, I was like, oh, I'm going to make this uh, my next journal for Art Journaling the Magic. And I had it sitting on my shelf like this, and it was propped up against one of these other journals. And I never thought twice about it. I actually just thought this was the journal. So this week, um, when we were getting together, I said, oh, don't bother like bringing me one of the journals to work in. I'm just going to use my Pollyanna one. And uh, luckily, <laughs> Tanji had kind of thought to herself, like, I know he doesn't have a Pollyanna one because we haven't sent him one. But she also didn't question it because she thought I might have uh, found one elsewhere. And uh, she brought me this one just in case I had made a mistake and I absolutely had when I went on the day on Monday I went to pick this up off the shelf and I was like oh, it's the book <laughs> it's not the actual journal that I thought it was I just thought it was because it was the front cover was propped up against this one so all I could see were the deckled edges and this cover so to me that just looked like a journal anyway probably not the most hilarious story you've ever heard but um, I was freaking out on Monday night and I tried to steal Steve's Coco one which he hasn't worked in yet which ironically, as soon as I needed it, he said he was going to use it, but <laughs> I'll get it another day. Anyway, so now I'm going to get uh, a Pollyanna journal and probably use that for whenever the next art drilling the magic is. I pretty much only uh, turn up to the ones in California because I am literally a couple of minutes away from the parks, but right now, who knows, because they're, um, they're shutting tomorrow officially, so... Yeah, let's just get on to the flip because I feel like if I talk about that anymore, I'll probably segue into a conversation that, let's be real, I'm not going to have. I'm not going to talk about it. It is what it is. Um, you know, pre I'm pretty much all online anyway, so things are just going to keep on going as per usual over here and uh, hopefully we can spend some time together. This is the first page. I kind of just put a bunch of stickers down here. If With Art Drilling the Magic, on the first day, you kind of uh, learn a lot of uh, the techniques. We go through a bunch of different lessons, and then you have uh, trades. So everyone that comes brings little trades. If you want to, it's um, optional, but everyone really gets into it. It's actually quite fun. And um, you can really tell a seasoned vet at Art Drilling the Magic, because they'll bring the most random trades that turn out to be incredibly important. <laughs> <laughs> things like this to keep your golden book open throughout the week, like clips become a really invaluable trade, little water cups, um, beautiful washcloths for your, your paint, because we do a lot of, it's like, I don't even know what to describe it, it's like scrapbooking, um, mixed media art, urban sketching, you know, it's kind of all of it wrapped into one, but you're also walking around a Disney park as well, it's insane, I love it. So, um, yeah, there's, there's really good trades that people give, um, and a lot of them also just include uh, little bits of ephemera and stickers and stuff, so I like to put a lot of mine in here, and we always get a little teacher photo there. So I'm going to flip this, 
this is our itinerary for the week. Just had a really good time with that. A lot of this is uh, quite plain because you'll see there are some pages in here that took most of my day when I was working on them. And uh, like I said, this was just started on Monday and it's Friday. So what is that? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, fr five days. This is a five day journal at this point, <laughs> um, which typically my other journals, I mean, I'm, I'm half a page in on day five. So this is, uh, it, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I did set out to finish it. I didn't finish it, but also um, I think that's something I can work towards over the years. There's no prize for finishing. I just, I felt like it'd be fun <laughs> to say that we did. There's a lot of pages in here. I don't know what the page count is, but um, I think someone got close to finishing before at a Walt Disney World retreat or something. We were talking about it because uh, I said it was probably impossible to do and Tanji was like, no, I think someone did get close or maybe did. Um, but anyway, that's a, a story for another time. This is a little photo stickers that I printed. You might have seen this on Instagram. I just printed it because I thought it was a nice little flat lay. And um, this was just going to be my page where Mickey Mouse came to live. So these are a couple of stickers. This is a little illustration I did on one of the days. And uh, this is actually a photo, but I printed it on photo sticker paper. It's linked in my Amazon store as well. The Chiltern Wove matte photo sticker paper. It's insanely good quality. You'll see it kind of printed throughout this journal. Um, but I took a photo of the... Uh, blind contours. Actually, I don't think they were blind. Maybe... No, they, they were regular. Uh, one line contour portraits that Tanji did, and I uh, put them in my journal just because I really loved them. And it's kind of become a little tradition there. So I wanted to keep that. Uh, some ephemera from the parks. These are, again, the photo stickers printed on that paper. Steve was working throughout the week, so sometimes I would catch up with him in his lunch break, or uh, we'd go and watch uh, the new parade magic happens, which is... Uh, I think I did a video on that on YouTube two weeks ago? It was either, no, it was not, not last week, it was the week before last week, so it's probably two weeks ago. These are my stamps, the three-faced stamps, and I did a little bit of uh, drawing on top of them with a graphite pencil. All oh, the cats are in here, and they're close to each other. Oliver, leave her alone. <laughs> Bianca is so happy right where she is, and Oliver's creeping close. <laughs> Alright, won't get distracted. Uh, oh, I need to snip this off. I folded that over earlier because I didn't I didn't need the edge, but I thought it best not to crack out the scissors in the middle of a Disney park. <laughs> this is, a, I think it's a grease pencil, a Sharpie grease pencil, and some watercolour of the uh, slide that they have at the Disneyland Resort Hotel. We just, uh, this is one of the Monday night kind of tutorials and lessons that I just, you know, really get into. A lot of book bashing with this one. <laughs> I didn't finish, but I think I'll uh, give it a good go and finish that. I do have another version that's finished. Where? Oh, my other journal's in my bag. It's not here. It's fine. I'm supposed to be flipping this one. I can't get distracted because if I get distracted, um, it'll take too long to get this up for you. And I don't want to leave you waiting until Saturday. So um, this is another urban sketch. I guess because I could technically consider this an urban sketch. But it's, it was more of a demo thing. Um, well, not a demo, but like a tutorial thing. This was just some urban sketching I did from the shops on Main Street. This one's Candy Palace. I did with the, what's it called? The Fude, the Sailor Fude fountain pen. And then I just used the water brush to um, pull out some of that ink because it's water reactive. Make some shadows with that. And this was all done with a Copic multi-liner in 0 0.1. I put a grey wash behind it and used a little... What's it called? The dot. Zig Clean Color Dot, the blue one, just to make little raindrops. Because, ironically, every time there's an art journal of magic at Disneyland, it's always raining. I think it's become tradition at this point. Um, there's a few, like, hilarious traditions that keep happening to each one that I turn up to anyway. <laughs> uh, but rain is definitely always on the cards. And it's, um, it, you know, it's fine because we, we do go there and we spend a lot of time art journaling and just, um, you know, being with each other, chatting, laughing going to find good places to eat, and uh, people watch, and sketch, and it, it's, it's mostly just relaxing fun. Um, we go on rides and stuff too. I always kind of opt out of the rides. I don't know why, I just get super nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of a wuss on rides, so ask Stella. Ask Stella what I was like when we went to Japan and I went on that Space Mountain ride. I mean, I've been on it before, but I, it's different when you're with someone that knows how you scream. I just, I don't know if I'm ready to let all the art journal and the magic ladies know. <laughs> I scream. Um, and blokes too. I heard there's some blokes in the Disney World version, uh, version offering the Disney World retreat, I should say. Um, sorry, it is late. My brain has left the building. This is uh, the marketplace. This is where Starbucks is. So very important building. <laughs> I always laugh when I go, I go into the park, I go straight to Starbucks. <laughs> 
Thanks. <laughs> oh, I'm not the only one though, and I, I have an annual pass, so I don't think it's you know quite as offensive as taking a family vacation and heading straight to the Starbucks. <laughs> I probably wouldn't do that if my mum were in town. This was one of the lessons we did on uh, point perspectives, which is ironically something I've never bothered to learn. I have always been curious to know how it worked. I figured it was something that you could probably learn one day, but every time I looked at um, diagrams and I saw it in books, I just thought, oh, I can't be bothered. It always just looked so mathematical, it didn't look appealing. So it was nice to actually have it demoed in front of me and it was actually quite understandable. And, uh, and it was really, really clearly demoed and I really got into it actually. So uh, you'll see, I, 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 put, I flexed on this during the week because I was really excited about this, especially the two point perspective. That one really kind of um, hit at home for me. So I love that. This is a bit of uh, tracing paper or grease paper or something just to keep, because this was smudging everywhere. This is just a, a graphite pencil and some, uh, what's that called? Pilot Color Eno? Just a pink pencil. I was just really getting into the scribbling. This was uh, one of my lessons on uh, doing the, the characters' heads but reinterpreting over and over and over again. It's, an, it's a kind of a demo that looks at style and how that develops. So I really like that. It's also a great uh, way to fill space and work on patterns and stuff. Here's a bit more of a finished spread. So this is something interesting to look at. <laughs> Everything up until now has just been like, uh, you know, have a little go at something on a page. But this is uh, when we went to see Steve at his um, show and we had some photos. I drew my pencil case. This is my new Delde pencil pouch that has, it. to me it looks like a Duffy. If you know Duffy, the teddy bear from, uh, well, Mickey's teddy bear. That's why I bought this one. And I put a whole bunch of keychains on it from Disney World, uh, Disney World, from Tokyo Disneyland. So it's it's actually really um, outrageous now. It, I got it because it was so great to travel with. And now that it has like 60 keychains on it, it's really not the most travel friendly anymore. But, you know, I, I, I'll deal with it just to be have just to be able to have all of that on there. That accoutrement. <laughs> um, I'll save you the uh, pausing and just let you know that my journaling was quite plain as I was in the parks because I was uh, in a very peaceful state. I was feeling very creatively expressed at all times, so the journaling is mostly about what happened um, and nothing salacious to read in there. <laughs> I've, I've said that before and I found that people actually stop to go and read it at that point. All, all that to say, I don't care if you read it or not, but I'm just going to save you. There's nothing really interesting written there, so um, this is more of a visual presentation. This is also the three-faced stamp set and another little, uh, it wasn't really a lesson, but it was something we looked at, uh, more mixing your mediums together and again, reinterpreting something over and over and over again to work on style or motif or, you know, building on a theme. And uh, what I really, really like about this actually is the one that I did in pink uh, because I did like all of these and originally I was trying to make sure there was a Mickey element on each one. And then I think I even said that they were my mini girls, which is ridiculous. I said they were mini because it was she's a girl, but um, technically I was drawing Mickey Mouses everywhere. So they've got little Mickey elements on each one, and I, um, yeah, I, I got stuck. And so there's all these heads half stamped out, like second generation stamped on the back that I couldn't fill because I'd, that was as many ideas as I had before my brain stopped. And uh, I left it, and then the next day I came back and I did this one, and I thought, oh, that's really nice that she just stands out like that. Um, and I wrote mouse, and she has a little necklace that says duh. So, clock the reference. <laughs> if you know, you know. And if you don't, it's Mean Girls. This is from Toontown. I actually did this one today. I had this little postcard in there, and I saw it was green, and I saw a tree, and I thought, you know, me being the abstract thinker that I am, <laughs> I put it down, and I just drew the tree on there straight up. I, I tried to do this one so that it was all the same pen width, like... I'm, I'm usually trying to switch up the line variation or I, I try to go for a scratchy scribbly style and a double line effect, but this one I wanted to just do one line, but not a one line contour. It was just as if every time I went to draw one part of the image, I couldn't, I couldn't correct myself. So everything was just a shape that I committed to. And I say all that to say that I don't really love it. Um, I love the memory of it I, and I love that I tried it, but I don't think it is an aesthetic that I would try again. Possibly, maybe something more simple, because I mean, Toontown is kind of crazy as it is. Um, I was drawing that part of the post office that, you know, it's kind of wedged between a few different buildings and there's a tree and there's a lamp and there's a little car out here. So yeah, it was, it was a tricky one, but I do like that I tried it. This is also a postcard and um, 
because I thought I'd put a postcard in there since I drew the post office. And it is a letter to my future self if ever I consider having children, just to remember um, to read this and to send myself back to Toontown and just soak up the sights and sounds of hundreds and hundreds of screaming and crying children <laughs> and see if I don't have a change of heart. No, look, I, I'm not really out to try and have kids, but I, um, you know, sometimes I'll catch the urge. I'll catch the urge to think about it. I used to actually used to really be, um, a hundred percent certain that I was definitely going to have children when I grew up. And then uh, after babysitting my nephew for the better part of 14 months. I thought, you know what? The best part about having uh, these kids around is that you can give them back to their parents at the end of the day and you don't have to administer the discipline. So I think I'm really just happy to be an uncle, to be honest. But um, this is a letter to myself and it is, it's jovial. Like, please don't take that seriously. Um, even though it is <laughs> whole joke, half earnest. Is that the saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I watch too much Kath and Kim to really know what sayings are anymore. Here's a bunch of stickers. This was actually a demo page where um, sometimes as we're going through, we just need to uh, sh sh qu quickly show something. And so I have these random pages. In fact, I think there's one here. Yeah, this was uh, little folds and fabrics on a, the bottom of a dress, like the crinoline. Um, so I do end up with pages where half things are started or it's just a quick example. So I just tried to cover it with little bits and pieces. I don't mind that it's all, you know, kind of mi mix and matched on the page. I just like that it's in there. Um, these t typically, I think a lot of people, the way we do art during the magic, I say we, but I've only done a couple. I've done two retreats, like the full retreat and one kind of jumped in and out at half at the end. Um, but I, I believe a lot of people will do one journal per retreat. So it's not something that you take back and, um, you know, save space for. You really want to get yourself into it. And then anything you don't finish on the retreat, you can do, obviously, after the fact. And because um, there's a lot of information to take in. There's a lot to try. And then not only that is there a lot to try, but then when you're watching other people do something, then your own ideas suddenly reignite and you've got 55 new things to try. So it's, um, it's really great because it's, it's a nice, um, it's a nice safe space to share all those ideas. And, um, everyone's really encouraging to try the things that they enjoyed. And, um, you know, then you get really encouraged to, to give those ideas back. So it's actually really, uh, really fun place to be just for your imagination to kind of run wild. And, um, and yeah, so people tend not to worry about pages not looking aesthetically pleasing like they might usually look on Instagram. And I think even that is just a really refreshing change. Like if I'm truly honest, um, because I do work in this, you know, let's call it an industry, but art journaling is super niche, but you know, it's art, a lot of creativity, a lot of when you're selling products online, there's, there's such an aesthetic focus, you know, making sure that it's marketable by the way that it's presented in, you know, photography and um, video formats. And sometimes, you know, I do enjoy it. There's a lot of times where I really enjoy it, but sometimes it feels like, oh, you know, there is still a real part of me that ends up with stuff like this and I wish people could see it. But at the same time, it's like, you don't want to share too much because you don't know if you show too much of this, then people are going to think that that's your actual work. So yeah, it's, it, I think it's just a nice place to be because it's, it's really honest, you know, you're doing it in front of people and, um, and whenever I got caught up in my head about trying to pull something together and make it super pretty and nice and make it make sense, I was reminded that I was allowed to have things like this and it was completely fine. So, um, I, I really value that, value it for that as well. This was, uh, a part of the, I don't know what, what that tree is. I want to say it's cherry blossom because that's what it reminded me of, but that was in California Adventure. And, uh, funnily enough, we had a little sticker in the trades that kind of looked like that. So that was nice. Put that in there. These little Pantone postcards are a part of a tricolor challenge. So um, it was also good to find a good use for those. I found a really good use for one of them in the uh, in the back of the journal. This was one of the demos, like I said before. I will probably end up covering up over this, um, but you know, it'll live forever on YouTube if ever I'm curious to go back and look at it. I don't think I will be, but you know, it's there. Uh, these are some Cruellas I did randomly. This one is done with a uh, wow. I've just, I use so many different pens, like all at once now. I kind of remember everything. Pentel pigment brush pen. Am I lying? It's this one. What's this? Um, I bet it's not going to say it on there now. Oh, I can't tell, but I think it, it's a, it's definitely called a pigment brush. Anyway. Oh yeah. Pentel. <laughs> Pentel pigment brush in black, but then I used a gray, a gray water brush 
uh, over the top. And it's not really a grey one, it's actually one of the Tim Holtz detailer brushes with Sumi Calligraphy ink, because it's waterproof, but then I dilute it down with a lot of water, so I just have a grey wash brush. And the reason I like it to be waterproof is that you can build up the tones. So I have this very neutral, you know, mid-grey tone, um, and so I can make it darker and darker and darker just by letting it dry and then going over it again, letting it dry, going over it again. Which I didn't do here, but I think it is somewhere else in here. This is uh, one that I actually did with a water-soluble brush pen. I think it was a Zig Clean Color. So you can see the difference between effects when the pen itself is where you're pulling the ink from and when the ink is applied over the top of something that's waterproof. So that was a nice little contrast. Also the way the blacks pull out. I personally love this more neutral, if not warm, grey than I do the cool grey, which is interesting because I used to really love the cool grey. I think I just love a true neutral, to be honest. Um, this is uh, one of the lessons that we do, like a scavenger hunt, but I didn't quite get everything. Actually, I don't think I did the scavenger hunt. I think mine was just like snapshots. Um, I've done this before with light bulbs over Christmas. Actually, I do have this one here. I'll show you because it's um, it's nice to see that one all finished. Um, this was over Christmas. I went and grabbed all my little memories from throughout the week and put them into these little Christmas light bulbs. So this time I did it in these circles. But yeah, nowhere near finished. I think I did two days worth on this, but I still have the rest to put in there. Which is nice, I can still keep reliving the experience whenever I get a spare <laughs> moment uh, after the fact. Then you, when you're going through the Disney Blues, which I'm luckily enough, uh, lucky enough not to get since I, I live close enough, but um, when you are feeling those withdrawals from the group itself, and from the retreat, you can go back and revisit it, which is good. Um, Madame Medusa, just a few little fashion sketches to see what she was like um, to try and draw. This is a blind contour drawing, so this is where you close your eyes and you... We don't close your eyes, but you don't look at the page while you're drawing it. And this is my self-portrait. I don't mind that, actually. I'm not finished. I did a grey wash because I was going to do some white pen work in there, but... No, I thought that was quite good. I actually did another one. Please, I want you to comment who this looks like. Because I, want, I don't want anyone to know who I think it looks like, but I also don't want you to comment that name in the comment section. <laughs> so, um, perhaps try and find an emoji that, that would show what that looks like. I, I don't know. I asked Steve and he said it straight away. And I asked some of the other ladies and they said they saw it too, so I'm curious to know. But please don't try and spam that name in the comment section because I'm quite nervous that <laughs> YouTube would be like, what is this video about? Um, yeah, that was another blind contour drawing. It was supposed to be of me, so it's it's kind of scary that it came out like that. <laughs> if you know who I'm even implying I'm talking about. This is a grey wash Mickey and Minnie heads, and I was using some watercolour and a water-soluble fountain pen to put some details on. This I actually did after another page. I might just... Oh, I won't quickly flip to it, because there's a lot to see beforehand, but um, I did another page of these first, and then I came back to this and tried this version. So you'll see... It was kind of based off of a retro character that I did a whole page on before. Um, another Cruella, just the same way I did the other one with the black pen and the ink wash. Uh, this one is nowhere near finished. It was supposed to be another snapshots page, but I, I, did, I only did one. Um, I've been laughing at this Instagram called Influencers in the Wild. And Disneyland's a great place to look for that, by the way. <laughs> if you like the Instagram page, Disneyland is the real life uh, version of that Instagram page because everyone and their dog is on Instagram trying to get the perfect shot at Disneyland. Um, so I, I did, I captured that little snapshot. Perhaps I'll do all of them as influences in the wild. I don't know, but yeah, that one's kind of nowhere near finished. I did this today. I was sitting at Jolly Holiday, just sketching people that walked by and sharing my thoughts about who I thought they were and where their life was at. <laughs> Very invasive. Uh, luckily no one saw me as I was doing it. I always get worried they're going to look at me as I'm looking at them. But a lot of the time they're just walking and I try and remember exactly uh, what it was that made me want to draw them. So for her it was like her scrunched up hood. Um, for this one it was just kind of the boy, the reluctant boyfriend that was wearing the Mickey Mouse ears that looked like he didn't want to be. <laughs> Um, the mother carrying the backpack with, like, everyone's supplies in it. She looks quite cross. And this one chick who just managed to look ultra glamorous, even though it's been raining all week. Like, how did she manage? You know, some people can just pull it off. Like, you've got me in the corner looking like a drowned harass rat, and she's just walking over, like, stepped off a runway. 
Um, so I was really happy for her. I'm happy for her glamour. <laughs> Uh, here's that photo paper again. See, this is this is what I mean. I mean, it's really good. If you want to get some bright, vibrant, like, punch you in the face color, this is definitely a must try. And if you're really messy with glue, I'm super messy with glue, so um, this is why I love the photo sticker paper. Again, it's linked in the description in the Amazon thing. Chiltern Wove matte photo sticker paper. Yeah, I love that. These were from Magic Happens Parade. Put them down there. Some more blind contours. The pen was water soluble, so I decided to just um, pull some of that ink around and play with it. Um, this is a beautiful image I did. <laughs> this was a, there was a little maquette, I think it's called. I don't know, what are the gray things that they model? Maybe a character model or something. I did that, um, a drawing based off of that from the Lamplight Lounge with this abstract background going on. I thought that was cute. This. This is what I was talking about, that two-point perspective that I've never tried before. This is why I love that. I mean, I, I don't always want to draw like this, and I certainly don't want to be an architect, but you know I went on a bit of a, an urban sketching bender last year. This is, this is reigniting it for me, so I'm a little worried about <laughs> the direction of my, uh, my content for the next few weeks, because you know when I get on a kick, it's, it's just going to happen. But yeah, I loved this, and this whole page actually came together as... Um, it was based off of one of the lessons, and it was something that I, I feel like I was already doing, but then when I actually intentionally tried to do it, I realized I thought very differently about it. So, because I'm not trying to give too much away, because obviously the lessons are for the retreat, but yeah, I was, I was really, really happy with this, and um, I, I can't say more about it. I super love it. I love these little characters that were on the side of the float. This is the Coco float from Magic Happens, from the back angle and just pulling out all the little details. But I especially love this. This is one of the little houses that's just on, or like a palace or something, that's just down here by this staircase. The, the staircase that meets the Marigold Bridge, there's this this one here. And then there's tons of them underneath there, but just this one I decided to draw, and I'm so glad that we did that two-point perspective so I could give it a go. I was very happy, love that. Uh, and that's done. We went to Animation Academy in California Adventure and drew Donald Duck. There's something about him that I just don't think looks right. And I'm, I'm always kind of questioning these days whether they actually teach you how to draw the character the way they draw it or if there's not an Animation Academy version. And yeah, I don't know, because it's happened before and maybe it's just me, but um, we have before, I think one of the, the Goofies we did before, we realized they'd mixed goof, half Goofy, half Pluto up. So I think it could happen because I'm sure they have to memorize a lot of the different characters. But yeah, something about this didn't look right. In, in any case, I actually got distracted and I was drawing the Yzma from one of the paintings on the wall. <laughs> Last time I was watching, um, Mindy Lacefield was at the retreat and she was drawing an Alice, for, uh, Mary Blair Alice from the wall. And so I desperately wanted to draw a Mary Blair Alice as well. And I, I think a few of us were drawing it actually. And this time I looked on the wall and I was like, oh, I'll draw that Yzma while I'm waiting. Because, um, but he went pretty quick. I, I did have to finish some of this outside. Usually they go quite slow, but he went really, really quick. And then that prompted this kind of exploration in Donald Ducks. But I was trying to go for more of a vintage Donald Duck, and then just experimenting with some weirder styles down here. But that's that, um, you know they sell that plush? There's that new plush? I don't know if it's, how new it is, but they were selling, it, he looks really angry, and it's a vintage Donald Duck. I like that, and this is a wind-up toy which um, his face actually inspired this this little aesthetic down here, which is how this happened and is probably one of my most favorite things ever. Well, in this journal anyway. I got a lot of favorite things everywhere. <laughs> um, I absolutely love, love, love this. This is what I was saying about the character page that I did before with the Mickey and Minnie heads. So I had done the Donalds first and then I thought, well, I wonder if it would work with any other character heads. And I, I like it. There definitely were some that I preferred over others. Like, I, I liked Minnie with the ears colored in here, and I liked Mickey with only that um, peak colored in. Because you can see how I did different versions to see if I liked something different, I would change subtle things. Like, I like her polka dots, um, but I like him to have stripes that aren't circled. I like him to have the open stripes. But I also like this Widow's Peak. So it, I was kind of exploring all of that. These are all exactly the same though. Um, and I kind of settled on enjoying that from the get-go. 
So that was really fun. And I had this one last postcard left over from the set of three that I had for the color challenge. And then one of the trades had this beautiful piece of paper in there. It was a, it's a really thin kind of, um, feels like a handmade paper or something. And when I saw the colors together, I thought, oh, that's Donald Duck. <laughs> So I just glued it down, and that's my abstract Donald Duck, which we were all laughing at, because I was like, how is this something that I, I love more than probably anything? Um, and it's it was just two pieces of paper that I just glued in. <laughs> we were joking, being like, you could spend, you know, hours and hours and hours doing something, you know, really, really intricate and detailed, like that cocoa float or something, but then this would end up in the museum. Something that you just stuck onto a page. <laughs> you know, not that it would, but we were kind of joking about that. I, um, I really love it. I think it's really fun. I don't think I'll move in this direction in the future, just in case you're worried, but <laughs> it's nice. Um, anyway, so this is the last page, which uh, was just putting everything together that hadn't found a home yet, including the little notice that popped up when they said they were going to close the park. So, um, that was sad, but this was, <laughs> I took a photo, I took photos of the parade because I wanted to draw it later, and I looked at my, um, photo of the frozen float, and I saw the Olaf one, I was like, he looks really odd, so I zoomed right in, and he just looked so unimpressed. <laughs> I decided to print out this big photo, I think there's another photo of that in here somewhere, so I've done it twice, because I thought it was so funny. On that, on that page where the, all the other floats are, there's definitely another one. There it is. I printed it smaller for that page. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was hilarious. Because it's he's just, it's tiny in the photo, but you could just see him staring straight back at you. <laughs> uh, and this is it, the last page with this pocket. This is another thing from the trades that I'm talking about. Like, people that have been there before and people that get it, you know, that this is probably one of the most invaluable pieces of trade you could get. <laughs> for art drawing the magic, because you're gonna end up collecting things, and you can see I've still got a few more things that I get to play around with and find homes for. I've actually got a ton more than this, but this is what I was just kind of working with uh, at the parks. And that's it, that is my golden book journal for art journaling the magic number 15. I hope you enjoyed the flip. I certainly enjoyed the entire week that I spent there. I wish it were longer. I also wish the park was staying open, but um, I completely understand why uh, it's going to close for a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to take this party on the road and enjoy myself behind the scenes. Um, if you want to know more information about this, I'll link anything you might want to know in the description box below. Um, but yeah, get involved, have a look at it, be around on Instagram and just enjoy uh, some of the hashtags that you can find work on. I um, I, I am not affiliated in any way other than I guest teach at the retreat, um, but only like at the ones that come to California. I was supposed to say Walt Disney World then. I keep getting confused. I'm definitely at California. <laughs> I'm in Anaheim. Um, and yeah, so, and that's been a really fun experience just being able to uh, be a part of that. And um, I'm going to thank everyone that was involved at Art Journaling the Magic, especially Tanji. And, uh, and for allowing me to participate and to uh, share some of what I know and what I love and what I enjoy and being able to uh, have the experience to learn from everybody as well because it is always something that you kind of stress that you never finish learning but um, something they don't also tell you is that when you uh, when you grow your own business uh, sometimes it can be really hard to find places that, that will uh, want you to come and learn from them as well. Uh, because it's sometimes become a bit of a conflict of interest. So Tanji has also be, always been so great and uh, so gracious and kind to allow me to uh, not only come in and enjoy the experience, but to just um, like share like all the other students and, and you know learn as much as I want to learn, take as much of those lessons and, uh, and explore on them as much as I want to. And uh, that's a, an opportunity I really don't take for granted. So... Um, I hope this shows how much fun we've had in the past five days. Thank you again, Tanji. Thank you for all the wonderful ladies that were there this week and for the fabulous week you shared with me. I am um, very, very grateful, and I hope we'll see each other again very, very soon. I say soon, but I don't think it's until the end of the year that the uh, the next Art Drawing the Magic is in California. I, I think there'll be some more in Walt well, Disney World soon, um, and there are also the Magic um, Sketch Club and the Happy Place online. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to check out, but again, I'll link that in the description box if there's anything you want to go and see more about the group and the retreat. Oh, but yeah, this has been my journal. Thanks for watching the flip. Um, until next time, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Stay safe.
Bye.